This is Thrivenomics presented by Thrive Mortgage. Welcome to episode two of the Thrivenomics podcast. I've got my producer, Raul Espinoza, sitting next to me here. Good morning, Raul. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, having you on this side of the camera yeah, instead know, of right? that, over there. Right, usually I'm station. just a voice. No, the, di- no, uh, the disembodied voice of yes. Raul Espinoza. Yeah. On um, this episode, uh, we, we kind of announced in the first uh, podcast that we did, uh, the, the one where we interviewed Michael Jones, we announced that this is going to be more than just talking about real estate all the time because mortgages are boring. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, just to put, put uh, not to put too fine a point on it, but uh, mortgages are boring. Real estate uh, can be exciting, but um, we, uh, we, we like to talk about how uh, it's more exciting for us to talk about how these things that we're doing as a mortgage company are impacting the folks that we serve and impacting our local communities. Well, Um, one of one of the ways that it's, we're making it exciting is the mortgage business might be a little boring, but the, the people in it and the things that we're doing are very exciting. mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that I've learned being in the mortgage uh, industry is uh, just a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes. A lot of the Mm -hmm. people are are just awesome people and and they really are involved in their communities and, you know, working with Defenders of Freedom, which I think you're going to get into, is yeah. uh, it's huge because uh, sometimes I, when I talk to some of my friends and what I do, I talk to them about Defenders of Freedom and, and things that we're involved in, and they're like, wait, you work for a mortgage, mortgage company? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I do. Yeah. It's just, you know, we're, we're really just showing what a lot of our employees are involved in, what our company's involved in. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mortgages are what we do. It's not who we are. And, yes. and I think that's a, uh, you that's, just, that's a really good statement, actually. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wrote it. Um, no, I, but I mean, it, it's true. And um, this, and this is one of the things that I think, um, and, and this is not just going to be all about Thrive, but this is one of the right. things that I think separates us from, from a lot of other companies and not just mortgage companies, but companies in general, right. in that w- we definitely see the, um, the responsibility that we have of, or the opportunity, I should say, that we have of making a, a bigger impact on just getting somebody into their dream home, which is great, but it really only impacts that family and their immediate circle. Um, what we're doing with, we, we uh, just launched an, an initiative. It's it's more, uh, it's more it's been something that's been a part of our culture and a part of our company for a long time, but we never really had an official name to it or never had right. really any, any kind of official organization to it. We do now, and we're calling it thrive forward. And basically this is our, um, this is our opportunity to, uh, kind of give a voice to the folks that may not necessarily have access to the same networks that we do. And it yeah. gives them, uh, it kind of raises their, their profile a little bit and gives them some more exposure on the great work that they're doing. Uh, so we're going to be, um, thrive forward is something that we're going to just be, um, promoting very, very heavily over uh, the next several years. And uh, this year, we have kind of joined forces with, you mentioned them, Defenders of Freedom. And um, if you're unfamiliar with this organization, they are a great organization. They've, they've been around for a while. And they are uh, their, their mission is to support uh, veterans and uh, especially combat veterans in adjusting to civilian life in whatever capacity that means. One of the most impactful things that they've been doing, though, is focusing on those soldiers and uh, and our military veterans who are coming back home after combat, after deployment, and are suffering from either traumatic brain injury or Mm -hmm. post traumatic stress. And that can come that can manifest itself in a number of different forms. And getting to know the folks at Defenders of Freedom has been really, really, uh, um, really impactful for me. And also seeing the work that they're doing, getting to meet some of the veterans who have benefited from the treatments that that uh, Defenders of Freedom has has been basically paying for mm-hmm. for them to go through. Yeah. And um, there's a, a video uh, you, that you put together yeah. that's out on our YouTube channel, and we promoted on social media about the work that Defenders of Freedom is doing, as well as the work of uh, the Synapse Clinic up in yes. Dallas and Dr. Gooday and what she's what her and her team have, have been putting together and just the, the amazing strides that they've been making in the lives of so many veterans that are, uh, that are dealing with this. Um, so that's what today's podcast is going to be about. Yes. It's going to be talking about defenders of freedom 
and uh, to to a certain degree Synapse and uh, the uh, Human Performance Cl- Synapse Human Performance Clinic, I believe is the full name. Yeah. You just do a Google search uh, of that in uh, Dallas, you'll be able to find them. Yeah. They're doing amazing work, and it's not just veterans they work with. They they work they specialize in folks who have undergone some kind of traumatic brain injury and just help them kind of reconnect those uh, those lines that have been yeah. severed as a result of whatever it was that they went through. Um, but we found out about them through Defenders of Freedom. So uh, today's podcast is going to feature two different interviews. One is I had the opportunity of, uh, it's a gentleman that I met when I and several other executives from, uh, from Thrive right. went up to Dallas and got to tour the Synapse Clinic and got to see firsthand exactly what the what the equipment looks like, what the machinery looks like, how they take them through uh, all the different battery of tests that they go that they go through, and it was really, really, um, it was, it, it, I'll, I'll just gonna say it, it, it was uh, very moving yeah. and very, very emotional and very um, uh, just amazing. Uh, just yeah. the technology that's out there that can help these help these folks live better lives. Mm-hmm. And I had the opportunity while I was up in Dallas, I had the opportunity to meet Major Anthony Smith, the retired mm-hmm. uh, retired Army. And we invited him because of his story and his testimony, what he shared with us up there, we invited him to be a part of our company summit that was held just a few weeks back down here in Austin. So I had the opportunity while he was in Austin for summit uh, to sit down and interview him. So the first video clip that you're going to, or the first audio clip that you're going to hear, if you're only listening is going to be my interview with, with uh, major Smith and what he experienced. I mean, I, can't believe this guy's above ground. I know. Uh, when I was editing this, it really touched me. I like, was, I'm not even joking. Because, you know, oh, yeah. like me being behind the camera and mm-hmm. kind of dealing with all this and making sure everything looks really cool so, you know, everyone can see it. Um, I miss a lot of those details when I'm working. And yeah. when I was by myself working on this, and wow, that it's just very powerful. It, I'm, I'm really, really glad that we were able to capture this and mm-hmm. that everyone's going to be able to hear this. And I really hope everyone... Uh, gives it a listen because yeah. it's really good. I, I just can't believe that we're involved in, in this, and and I just can't believe that we had the opportunity to interview him. Yeah, that, that's just it's uh, it's awesome. I mean, the the grace of God and his survival instincts are yes. the only two reasons why he is still alive and yeah. st- and and improving and getting better. And I mean, by by all accounts, he should be dead. Yes. Um, but he managed to, he fought and fought and fought for years and years and years and finally worked his way back to, yeah. to where he's at today. Um, the second audio clip is an interview uh, that our CEO, Roy Jones, did, conducted with Eric Berkman. Uh, I hope I pronounced his last name right. Berkman. Berkman. Berkman, yeah. Uh, Eric Berkman. And Eric is not only a, um, has not only been a, a patient at the Synapse Clinic, and has gone through and has benefited from uh, from Defenders of Freedom. He now works with them, and uh, works to works with them to to help uh, other veterans who are needing the same kind of support. And so, two very very um, moving and very impactful uh, interviews that were conducted yes. at Summit, and we're very pleased to uh, be able to present them to you now. Um, we invite you to stick around to the end of the podcast. Um, there is a way, we, uh, we'll announce a way to that you can uh, get involved with Defenders of Freedom and um, and ways that you can support what they're doing and just go uh, go learn more information yes. about them as well. Uh, so we invite you to, to listen to both interviews and then stick around at the end for, uh, for that information. But yeah. with... Uh, with no further ado, I guess let's, uh, let's roll it. We'll roll the tape. All right, we're back again. Still second day of, uh, of Thrive's Summit 2020, and I have an incredibly special guest uh, with me today. This is retired Major Anthony Smith. And uh, Anthony, which branch of the military you were in? You were Army, right? I was in the Army. You were Army. So Major Smith uh, underwent a really, really traumatic uh, experience when you were uh, deployed in Afghanistan. Uh, Iraq. It was, it was Iraq. It was okay, Iraq. you you went through multiple deployments though, right? Correct. Okay, where all, where all in the world were you deployed? Uh, I've been deployed uh, uh, just calls in Panama. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I did uh, Desert Storm. Right. Uh, 
I did Bosnia, but it wasn't considered uh, combat at the time. I understand. And then I went into Iraq. Okay. And Iraq is where you sustained the like the the really brutal injuries that you uh, that you faced, right? Correct. Okay. And what what year was that? Uh, that was in uh, April 24, 2004. 2004. So pr- pr- pretty early on in the conflict there. Correct. All right. So uh, d- describe for me a little bit about what actually happened. Like what what did, what did you encounter? Because I've I've heard the story a couple of times and I still can't believe it. I mean I can't believe that you survived going through this. So. Share a little bit about what, what you encountered. Uh, I was at uh, Camp Taji in Iraq, it's uh, north of Baghdad. Right. Uh, right off of Route Tampa, uh, our, our fob came under attack by the insurgents and uh, they saw the RPG round at a bunker. Right. And uh, the RPG ended up going straight through my body. Yeah. And uh, then I took uh, four 50, 50 cal rounds to my body, mm-hmm. then a mortar blew up in front of me. I mean, just bam, just one thing after another. And this all occurred within the span of what, about five minutes? Or uh, less. Five, five minutes or less, yeah. It's, it's and, you, and you never lost consciousness. Never lost consciousness. You were buried under, under the rubble. They had to dig you out. Correct. And they pretty much thought on, on the, declared you dead on the battlefield, right? Correct. They uh, When they found me and uh, pulled me up, they uh, did a, a field trek on me. Right. And uh, they uh, stopped breathing and had no heartbeat. Yeah. So they considered me uh dead and, right uh, killed in action so yeah so you were a dead man and zipped up in a body bag right and how did they discover that oops he's not, he's not quite dead well uh, they went looking for my dog tags right and uh so they uh unzipped the body bag to uh, see if uh, my dog tags were still attached to my boots yeah and uh, they saw uh, blood coming from my trach and uh so i was still alive that's and, I'm, okay so now it's okay we have a different kind of emergency on our hands correct so what are they doing when they discover that you're actually alive what what are they doing for, or what do you remember from that, that um, experience? Uh, from there that's where i get my story from everybody yeah. else <laughs> yeah so the, the nurse uh, she went to go get help right uh told the doctor that uh, there's a body still in the body bag alive he said that happens sometimes just push it down in the body bag and zip it back up. But she said this one was talking. Yeah. So uh, they uh, got me on the table, started working on me, but my records had already went forward, so they didn't know my blood type. Yeah. So they uh, gave me a, a B blood type, but they gave me the wrong RH factor. Right. And gave me 32 units of the wrong blood that uh, put me in a coma for 62 days. Wow. 62, to, so for the next two months, you're basically in a coma. Correct. And when you wake up, where are you? Uh, when I wake up, I'm at Brook Army Medical Center. Okay. Uh, thinking it's the next day. Right. <laughs> and and how long did it take for things to kind of count for all the realization of you had lost your arm, you've got a hole in your hip, you've got bullet wounds all over, and you're really banged up. Like, right. how long did it take for you to kind of take inventory of, man, I'm really in bad shape? Uh, it's kind of like uh, waking up in shock and not knowing really what's going on sure. and what's missing. Uh, but I went through two years of therapy at Brook Army Medical Center. Yeah. And that's when I started uh, kind of getting on my feet and getting a little bit of movement going on. Okay. So at this point, our, um, what, what is your, um, what's your family doing? Are, 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 were you married at, the, at this particular time? or were you yeah. still- I was married at uh, that particular time okay. when it happened. Uh, my uh, my older sister uh, Terry, they called her Mother Teresa at the uh, hospital. She uh-huh. she was the biggest one that took care of me at the hospital. Nice. Uh, made sure I was taken care of. And my uncle, uh, we call him Sonny, uh-huh. uh, but he's uh, his real name is William Butler. Okay. <laughs> so I had a I had a real good support team, good. family wise. Yeah. That uh, I think a lot of other soldiers didn't have at that time, but my family was right there by my side. Okay. The whole time. Well, that that's good. I'm glad you had that support. So as far as the results of injuries, not, I mean, let alone the injuries themselves, but what were some of the other byproducts of taking on those, uh, those traumatic hits? Like what were some of the things that were happening with you physically? Uh, I suffer from what's called TBI, traumatic brain injury level sure. two, uh, PTSD, but we like to say PTS. PTS right. Uh, we don't really like putting that D on there. Uh, right. uh, Blindness in my right eye, loss of hearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, my jaw was broken out uh, of five different places. Yeah. Uh, I suffered a T7 spinal cord injury. Uh-huh. Uh, I lost my right kidney. 
lost my right arm, the one that's the obvious. Uh, right. I lost my pull right here, uh -huh. uh, part of my femur. Uh, my knees were blowed out. Uh, my ankles were blowed out. Uh, and it just, uh, there's just so much that went on at the time. And uh, right. then I had uh, 17 different strokes because uh, from being in the body bag, I didn't have enough oxygen yeah. going to my brain. So I ended up developing what's also called Bell palsy. Right. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. So you, you're dealing with that. So 2004, when the incident occurs, Correct. two years you're in the hospital, recovering from that, learning so much, so many basic things all over again. Correct. And okay, and then so now let's uh, let's go a little bit forward. So we're 2006, 2007. Correct. And let's fast forward a little bit, a little bit more. So during that stretch of time. You uh, you were just dealing with some of the some of the disabilities that that were a result of the injuries, and what was the what was the time like? What was that progression like? What was going through your mind during uh, those days? Uh, at one point, I was going through a point where uh, it's, it's not a sense of feeling worthless, but sure. uh, it was like they called it somatic depression because I was trying to deal with getting myself back going again. Right. And uh, and during that span, that's when I started meeting uh, uh, people like uh, Donna from Defenders of Freedom. Right. They came in and started encouraging me mm -hmm. and pushing me and uh, giving me that extra uh, hand up that I needed to get going. Good. Well, let, let's talk about Defenders of Freedom uh, because they're they're an organization that that we are highly vested in, and uh, obviously you have a special Correct. place in, in your heart for them. Um, the uh, specifically one of the things that Defenders of Freedom has done is introduced you to a number of different I don't want to call them alternative therapy solutions, but basically they're they're not like mainstream. They're certainly not uh, all the med trying to put you on all the medications that you were on before because you were on how at at its peak you were on how many medications. Uh, I was on uh, 32 different types of medication. 32 different types of medication. 32 Correct. different drugs racing through your system. Correct. And now, after going through the treatment program that we'll talk about in just a second, but going after going through that treatment program, you're down to how many? Uh, four. Four. Nice. <laughs> that is. I, I can't <laughs> imagine what that's doing to you psychologically, much less uh, physically, with Correct. just not having all those chemicals in there. And now you're down down to four Correct. that are probably just four of the most critical. Yes, yeah, four of the most critical that I just have to have. Is one of those related to treating the diabetes that resulted from the, the, the wrong, having the, the wrong blood infusion? Uh, well, uh, I don't uh, take none of the diabetic medicine okay. because I lost the weight. Oh, so, good. okay, good. So that, like that countered that. Pounds. Fantastic. And, uh, but uh, the direct stuff like high blood pressure, I right. have to take that. Okay. Uh, some of the nerve damage that I do have from sure. neuropathy, yeah. I have to take the gabapentin. And uh, I'm at a, since since the therapy that I've been through, I usually be around a five or six pain level all yeah. the time. Yeah. So I'm mostly between a two and three. So uh, I still take hydrocodone, but yeah. I don't take as much as I used to. That's good. That's real good. All right, so let's talk about uh, your uh, what Defenders of Freedom has um, given you the or has given you access to or where, where they where they've helped you out. So there, there's the the clinic up in up in Dallas called Synapse. Correct. It's where where you and I met mm -hmm. and uh, saw you going through kind of the battery of treatments. So how long have you been a patient or how long had you been a patient of Synapse when we met you? Uh, when y'all met me, I had I was going through I think my fourth day. Okay. Synapse. Fourth day. Fourth day. So you had never been to that clinic before that particular trip. Never been there before. Never been there before. <laughs> okay. So in that four days, because I remember when I saw you, your right eye was la largely closed pretty much the whole time that you and I were, were conversing. Correct. And right now I'm looking at you and it's, it's boom, wide open. Correct. And that that is attributed to the, uh, th through the exercises that they were putting you through and so the physical therapy Correct. that they were doing as well as some of the other uh, battery of tests that they were putting you through. Correct. Okay. And uh, what they did was um, they woke up some of the nerves that I hadn't been using. Yeah. Uh, got me using, you know, I lost some of my big muscles. Sure. So they got me to start using some of my smaller muscles to take up for that. Okay. And, uh, and because of the... Um, uh, neurological therapy that they were giving me, I was able to get more of my focus back, more of my balance back. Yeah. And uh, and by them working with on the right side of my face like they did, uh, now my eye stays open, 
And uh, most of the time, it only really closes is when I'm like, like dead tired right. or smile too hard. Yeah, yeah, like you're doing right now. That's, 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 that's but, sweating out a little bit. Yeah, I get to smiling too hard, then it goes down just a little bit. And the ladies think like, you're winking at them, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but now, like, I don't, I, I don't. There's no effort. Like, as long as I'm just like relaxed, like I am talking. now, it, it's open and. I got some of my peripheral vision back from it as well. From That's the, good. From the trainer. So it wasn't so much that you just lost sight in your in your right eye. It's that the nerve damage was so severe that it was basically causing a type of blindness in your right eye. But through the therapy and through uh, through going through those treatments, it's reconnected those those nerves and 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 everything's firing the way it should now, right? Correct. Yeah, uh, I still have uh, some work to do still. Sure. But uh, I can. Uh, feel the right side of my face now which okay. uh, is a good thing and a bad thing because now when people punch me on the right side I can feel it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who in their right mind would want to punch you I mean, I mean given if anybody knows anything about your story and the fact that you're still upright and walking around is a testament to how tough a guy you are mm -hmm. so I, I, I would uh, I would question the sanity of anyone uh, looking to try and punch you <laughs> you know I uh, started doing uh, martial arts right and I uh, made the uh, US Paralympic Taekwondo team. That's awesome. So uh, we're not supposed to hit in the head, but sometimes I still got hit in the head. I understand. And uh, so it really didn't bother me at the time because sure. I didn't have no feeling. Uh -huh. So now when I accidentally get hit in the face, I'm like, oh my God, this is what they've been doing to my face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it really helped out in getting me uh, going and uh, doing the things I need to do. And, and by expanding my peripheral, I, uh, I can I can see that right. Well, now you can duck. Now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So so you were a uh, what what degree black belt were you before prior to your injury? Uh, before I got injured, I was a six degree black belt. Six in degree black belt in Taekwondo. Correct. All right. And since the injury, um, that you you basically had to just the, the way that it works, you had to start that journey over again. Correct. Right? Uh, well, they gave me the option to keep my rank and uh -huh. continue, but. Uh, Within myself, I felt like uh, it might be done some discrepancy. You know how people talk. Yeah. So what I did was I just started back over at White Belt. Okay. And worked my way all the way back up into fourth degree Black Belt in uh, Yangwon United under uh, Grandmaster Marshall Fagan. Mm -hmm. Got me my uh, helped me get back to my fourth degree, and then after that, uh, the Grandmaster said uh, I've done enough. Yeah. So then they uh, they started awarding me back my rank and. Uh, uh, last year, they awarded me my 10th degree black belt and recognized my adaptive martial arts style of a Ronald Kami Bushido. That is awesome. Congratulations on that achievement. I mean, oh, thank you. There, there's a lot of people that just do not have that kind of fortitude, and it's really admirable that, that you would willingly uh, push yourself uh, despite the limitations that, that you've had when you had fully functioning limbs and were a high class athlete and, and had everything going for you physically. To have that take, having so much of that taken away, you Correct. still did not let that keep you from progressing forward and from uh, and from regaining what you had effectively. Correct. So one other thing that I know about you is is that you are bringing martial arts to disadvantaged youth. You're trying to introduce kids to martial arts as a way to learn discipline and self-respect and uh, uh, over and above the, the physical gains that they'll get from, from the exercise, it's, uh, it's a mentality and, and something that, that develops inside of their character and you want to, uh, and, and you really want to expand that, uh, expand that more. So how many, uh, so you refer to them as dojos. Correct. So how many dojos do you have currently? Uh, I currently have 17 dojos. 17. Across the world. Start, starting from like just one? Right. It, the, when I originally started the dojo, it was really just to help help me and my kids sure. get connected, uh -huh. have something for me and my kids, and then pretty soon it just turned into uh, uh, kids with uh, ADHD needed help and those yeah. that had special needs that were on the spectrum. Yeah. That I started helping them, and then next thing they'll just start growing bigger and bigger. So then I said, well, let's de develop a curriculum for uh, adaptive martial arts to help these kids, and then okay. we start filtering in back into helping the veterans right. uh, get back in that were disabled or missing limbs. 
and help them start using martial arts as a discipline tool to get them to the next level. So you start you started with one, and you started this. Is this something you started prior to your injury or after your injury? Well, I had a martial arts school before. Sure. But I didn't think I was uh, capable of running one again. Uh -huh. uh, at that time, my PTS was real high. Yeah. So I was real uh, skeptical about being around people because I was scared what I might do mm -hmm. and not do. Uh, but once we are uh, through Tai Chi, once I got my center, mm -hmm. call it my synergy back, right. then I was able to start going. And then I had uh, people like uh, Grandmaster Marsha Fagan mm -hmm. and uh, Nick from One Kick Gym mm -hmm. out of uh, Las Vegas telling me, like, you know, forget what everybody else is saying, just do you. And then uh, Sandy uh, Tyrone, who taught me how to ski. Once he got me skiing, I started, I started thinking like, man, if I can do this. You can do that. I, I can do just not, about anything. I mean, when, I, I, I have skied uh, a lot, and I know how tired my legs are when I'm done. I cannot imagine spending a, a day or even a, a, a few minutes trying to ski with a banged up leg and with, with lo having lost my femur and uh, and and just having a repl basically a, a, an entire restructuring of my hip. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine how. I mean, my, my pain level, like you say, yours is a two, three. My pain level will be, be, be like eleven, like out of ten. So right. I cannot imagine going through that. It's, sure. that's, it's phenomenal. So the, you got uh, like people like Nico Mangalongo, uh, yeah, Operation Rebound, yeah, that provided all all the tools I needed. So I four track now. Okay. So uh, and by uh, by Donna hanging with me on my bike rides, uh -huh. that, uh, that 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 was one of the biggest encouragement because I usually sure. just got left, yeah, and be out there by myself. But she stood with me the whole She's time, so and that let me know that there was more people there to help. Well, you know, you go through a sense where you think everybody's against you, yeah, nobody's there to help you, and. And she stayed with me on that bike ride. Uh -huh. It let me know that people do care. Right. And they do want to see you push forward. And that gave me that boost. So uh, I had a lot of support that I didn't recognize at first. Uh -huh. After that uh, bike ride in 2006 with her for the MS-150, I knew, like, let's get this thing done let's and start do doing something. Let's do it. Well, you've been an amazing inspiration to us. And hearing your story uh, for the second time, now, well, third time now, and uh, you, you did a, a wonderful job of sharing it last night at our Thank awards you. dinner, and uh, I, I, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of tear-filled eyes uh, just listening to you uh, recount in great detail uh, what what you encountered, what was going on in your mind mm -hmm. in the years after, and now getting to a point where you are tied to an organization like Defenders of Freedom and also the the Dr. Goodday's clinic uh, at Synapse up in Dallas, mm -hmm. and the thing. The progression that you made over that short span of time is just phenomenal. And uh, telling your story, one of the things that, that we at Thrive um, use in a lot of our social media is stories matter. And um, and that, that's incredibly true, in, especially in your case. And hearing your story and getting a better idea of what veterans such as yourself who have suffered uh, TBI and who are dealing with PSD and, or PTS, excuse me, and um, they uh, just the things that y that y'all have gone through. What is it that the rest of the civilian population? What, what's the one thing or couple of things that you would want them to really understand about veterans who are who are dealing with traumatic brain injury and, and post traumatic stress? Um, mainly the uh, patience, patience, patient with them, and uh, and give them as much support as they want because of. Uh, if they were like me, you know, you know, hard charging and all that, when you yeah. get into that type of position, you feel kind of like you're useless because you can't do the stuff that you used to do. So uh -huh. kind of look at them at the perspective that they do want help, but they don't know how to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just help them and uh, push them forward and give them all the encouragement that they need right. so they can see life with hope and uh, totality and not feel like they're all alone in their situation. 
That's excellent advice. And I mean, because a lot of times, I know for me, I didn't uh, serve in any branch of the military. So I know sometimes for me, I, I kind of struggle with, I want to help, but or I want to do something to, to show support, but I don't know how to uh, how, how to really empathize with what they're going to. There's no way that I possibly could. Uh, I, I mean, a situation like what you went through probably would have killed me. And uh, I mean, that just goes to, to showing the, the toughness that, that our veterans are that gets just drilled into them and st- and situ- and shows situations that they willingly sacrifice their lives they willingly go into that fray and in the defense of freedom and uh, because they are fighting for something bigger than themselves as a part of something bigger than themselves correct and one of another bigger part that uh, helped me out uh, you know I go went to church a lot when I was a kid growing up sure. so I, I got I really started believing that uh, God had a purpose for me if he was going to keep me alive. Absolutely. So uh, being re- having a uh, something, thinking of something bigger than me and knowing that this thing is bigger than me yeah. and uh, having uh, Christ on my side uh, really helped me out a whole lot. Absolutely. That That is a, a, a wonderful point. I mean, we, 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 can, we can break out right now and have an altar call. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> And if anybody would like to be saved. <laughs> hey, we got a pull right there. We can baptize them as soon as we're done. So, yeah, it might be a little chilly. No, it's but heated too. <laughs> is it really? Oh, I wish. <laughs> we'll tell them that. Okay. They won't gotcha. discover it until after they fall in. Well, um, so other than I, I know that we're going to make a big push for um, per, for supporting Defenders of Freedom and supporting Synapse and so that they continue to, uh, can continue to do great work with, uh, with soldiers such as yourself. Um, what are some other ways that you think um, that folks can step up to help with uh, situations uh, with, with other soldiers and veterans who are suffering from the same issues that you are? Um, biggest thing is, is continue to encourage them to uh, uh, get involved in the programs like Defenders of Freedom because uh, they're nonprofits and one of the biggest things is getting those uh, those donations in, that yeah. money in yeah. to actually help because uh, th- though they're not like one of those big organizations mm-hmm. uh, like uh, Wounded Warrior Project, they're, they're a smaller, tight-knit yeah. family where they can uh, have that one-on-one encounter more yeah. uh, with the soldiers and with the veterans that are going through and uh, they need they need that push. Yeah. Uh, if uh, a lot of if a lot of veterans get what I got, uh-huh. uh, I believe their, their whole lives will change. Yeah. Because uh, I went 15 years. And nobody never treated my brain. Either. Yeah. They just assumed since I was up and moving and doing what I was doing that I was okay. Oh, he's fine. And, yeah. Uh, and I got to the point where I like, well, I guess this is the best I'm ever going to get, so I'm going to deal with it. Yeah. But then after going through synopsis and them uh, giving me all the training tools that I'm still working with. Yeah. I'm starting to find out that uh, I, I even got another level I can reach. You, you still, you still got it all up there. It's just, it's just a matter of making those connections. Right. And, I, I called. It, I, I had a scramble brain trying to put it together, but yeah. now I got organization. Yeah. Uh, better, even better organization. Still. That's good. That's a big help. Well, Anthony, it's an absolute joy getting to know you, and uh, even, even a huge honor uh, getting to talk to you and learn more about you. And uh, I w- wish you the best. We're, we're going to keep supporting you. Keep cheering you on, and uh, and, and keep uh, keep uh, doing everything we can to to support you and Defenders of Freedom. Awesome. And um, um, let us know anytime if there's ever anything we can do for you. Oh, I appreciate that. All right, love you, man. Love you too. All right, thank you. Thanks for hopping on with us. Uh, anytime. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. That an interview with Major Smith was uh, was a lot of fun. He's such a, he's got such a genuine heart and yes. just such a big smile. And yeah. uh, I mean, after, after hearing his testimony, I'm going to feel guilty for the rest of my life yeah. using a sick day. I, yeah, I, right. I am out of excuses. <laughs> also uh, feeling bad. I mean, this guy he's always in such a great mood. Always oh, yeah. like every time joking, like in the middle of his stories, just pulling a little joke and. It's mm-hmm. just, it's amazing to me that people can be that happy mm-hmm. after going through all that. Like, that's just, you know, makes me question my, you know, like the whole first world problem. Yeah. You can't complain thing. to me anymore <laughs> yeah, ever again. I, I won't. <laughs> I, I probably will, but I mean. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, yeah, it's, it's such a great story. And that leads us into the interview with uh, Roy Jones and Eric Berkwin.
And um, this is uh, this is going to be a little bit more about Defenders of Freedom and, and more kind of the operational side of how they do what they do. And uh, just a real good conversation between between Roy and, Roy and Eric. We'll be back at the end to talk about ways that you can su- uh, help support Defenders of Freedom and, and get involved. With no further ado, I guess let's, let's uh, roll it. We'll roll the tape. Well, great. Well, we're here today with Eric Berkwin, who is uh, uh, participating and, a, and a, a, a person that's involved with uh, Defenders of Freedom. Eric, it's great to meet you. Thanks, Roy. Thanks yeah. for having me here. Yeah. Listen, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Defenders of Freedom and, and your involvement as a veteran in the program. All right. Um, one of the things that I really like to, to see is whenever a person has a purpose, they actually uh, they start moving through life just a little bit better. And you know, I searched around for purposes for you know quite a few years after retiring, and I, I realized you know how important it is. So with that, my purpose is I like to help people. You know, and what I do throughout the organization, I help uh, veterans with their uh, VA benefits, Social Security benefits, or uh, CRC, which is a combat related special compensation, which is another benefit. You know, uh, it's for them uh, given by the government. So I like to make sure they're taken care of that way. So that's how I kind of fit in with the organization. I do a lot of vetting of veterans whenever they come in just to make sure that we're actually helping the people that we're looking to help and that the people who we're helping meet the qualifications that have been set forth by the organization. That's really great. Uh, I know, uh, you know, we visited a while back and you were kind of explaining the, uh, I guess it's called Synapse now, but it was the whole uh, uh, traumatic brain injury program. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, so um, the program we've got going on now, it's down in Dallas. It's called Synapse. Previously, it was up in Colorado and we called, uh, it was called Revive then. And uh, down here, they're doing a multitude of modalities uh, to treating brain injuries in order to make people feel, you know, more like they used to be. I know that prior to, you know, when I went down there, the way I felt, you know, when we went in, we did initial assessment to uh, kind of see where I was at. And uh, I spent about two weeks there going through all these uh, different modalities of training, trying to increase my uh, my cognitive abilities. And, you know, it was, uh, there was a mark result that showed performance where it increased from previously when I'd walked in, you know, yes. I was having issues with it. And, you know, just after going through and seeing the kind of, you know, change that can be wrought from experiencing it, you know, I was like, I saw the benefit and how many other people could, you know, use it too as well. So since then I've been advocating, you know, other veterans that I know, friends that have had, you know, other traumatic brain injuries, people who've also been wounded, yes. trying to get them through there. And so far it's been pretty successful. That's awesome. I, I remember one of the things that struck me, and, and you were just you were just telling me so much information, and I was just so excited to hear a program that was having such great uh, uh, benefits. But I think you you started talking about the C-reactive protein uh, that yeah. was in your body, and something that's kind of near and dear to me because I have to watch mine yeah. uh, at my ripe old age and uh, try and make sure that I'm at l- a lower risk of a heart attack. But you had some profound, uh, 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 I guess, results come from uh, that program. Program. Can, can you tell us a little bit yeah, about Yeah, I did. So um, like you mentioned with the C-reactive protein, all humans have this marker in their body and what it does, it measures the inflammation. And, um, you know, typically for a population, in a population, it's marked from zero to four. Yeah. Uh, four being, you know, pretty highly inflamed, being on the higher end of the marker. Yeah. Um, before I went to revive, mine was 15.6. And so My it was God. about 400 times worse than the average worse. Um, while I was up there, one of the therapies that I went up there for was called NAD plus therapy. And it was um, a precursor to getting stem cell therapy to treat my back issues. And what the NAD th- uh, plus therapy was designed to do is designed to go in and clean all my system out, rid my body of the inflammation and get rid of all the toxins, everything that's inside of it uh, to, you know, try to begin to kickstart the healing. And it was all, uh, again, in preparation for the, the stem cell therapy in the hyperbaric chamber just to accelerate the healing that, you know, I was getting from the benefits of the therapies. And, you know, initially it was, it was really rough because you know, getting all that out of your body, it's got to come one way or another and just, you know, sweat it out. It was kind of like the flu is what I was telling them. It just felt, felt rough, but 
you know, to, I'd do it all again. You know, it wasn't, the therapy was very, um, very beneficial for me. And it, it helped me out right now. My C-reactive protein sitting about a two, you know, and that's, you know, a little bit of diet changes. I can get it to come back down a little bit. I think that's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hard work. I don't get to eat all the stuff that I want to, but yeah. I want to. Hey, I'm a vegan brother, you know, oh. I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm down yeah. with that. <laughs> I don't know how you guys can do that, that discipline. <laughs> it, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's awesome. Yeah, you know, I just was blown away. I had an opportunity to tour Synapse, you know, with with Donna. Uh, yeah. Gosh, I guess it's been about a month ago now. And I, I it, the neuroscience that's out now that so few people know about. I think there's only three thousand professionals in that discipline, but I, I think it's just going to become a huge thing uh, in the future to where it's going to help so many veterans, you know, uh, with their recovery process. It's just it's just high tech stuff. It's Star Wars type stuff or matrix type stuff for, to me yeah. you know you know i'm kind of used to being at the tip of the spear yeah uh, I, bet I like you are. i like being here and seeing the new things that are beneficial because you know i've tried everything from eastern medicine and all the way to the western medicine different you know different therapies and you know this one i finally found some relief in um and it was a it was a conglomeration of just all the different things they did there just from starting out with checking out my nutritional needs to my hormonal needs and then you know treating the symptoms that were presented there through their therapies and their modalities to see you know what i needed sure so it, sure. you know it's it's been very beneficial I'm, I'm sitting at about 20 months out now from when i went wow and you know i'm still feeling just as good as i was then you know that's terrific. I know that when we visited before, you shared with me, and, and, and I, this, this means so much to me, you know, in our company, we talk about work-life balance, and, and you indicated how much uh, it, it helped your relationship with your, you know, with your, your family, you know, uh, just, just, I don't know, do you want to share any of that? Yeah, you know, I definitely will. One of the, um, one of the big signature wounds of the global war on terror, which is what we're obviously talking about right now, yeah. is um, the traumatic brain injury, the hidden injury that people are dealing with. And there's a lot of science going back showing that um, the guys dealing with traumatic brain injuries, they're getting their testosterone production is not being made anymore because it's, you know, the injuries, the blast injuries are knocking it off. Uh, through blood work, we established that that's what mine was. My my uh, testosterone was super low and my free testosterone is just non-existent. I was making it, you know, and I've attacked it with numerous different forms of therapy, such as, you know, medicinal therapy, talk therapy, just trying to treat depression, trying to treat the whole gamut of all the issues that yeah coming from you know and once um once i got to the hormonal you know aspect of it and being able to get this because you know uh, hormone treatment it's still uh, people look at it more of like a, um, a vanity thing whereas there's just yeah. a, a lot of science showing that the guys that aren't making it need it and it's you know it's beneficial for them it's medicinal so it took me a while to find an avenue to get it now that you know i'm using this medication this therapy it's been life-changing for me you know it's made me a whole whole lot more emotionally stable, more mentally stable, um, less prone to aggressiveness, you know, just it's made me, it's lifted the flaw, fog goes on my head. Now that's so interesting because I've always associated testosterone as making guys more uh, aggressive, but it, it doesn't, huh? No, no it's just, uh, you know, we've, we've got, we've all got the makeup inside of us. We all need the same things, you yeah. know, you can just like plants. You know? <laughs> and if you don't have what you need, there's obviously going to be some signs and symptoms of it showing up. And until you find out what it is to treat it, you know, yeah, you definitely yeah. have to get after it and yeah. figure out what it is. Well, I just know you just made an, a profound impact on me when you talked about uh, your uh, just being able to spend more time with your, your sons. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Is, do you have, was it boys and girls? I yeah, can't remember. We got three boys and one girl. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I spent the first, uh, the first half of their lives, you know, deployed and gone. And, yeah, yeah. you know, it's been so, it's been super beneficial to be able to spend this time with them, be able to, you know, actually enjoy my time with them where, you know, three or four years ago, I was just in constant pain, not able to really get out and enjoy stuff and do stuff with them. So yeah. it's been a real, real change. I've enjoyed it. Well, Eric, I really want to thank you for being vulnerable and sharing with us. This has been such an eye opener to me getting involved with Defenders of Freedom and, and just, we, we just need to wake America up to their opportunity to help. So I agree. Thank There's you, sir. Appreciate you. Thanks and for having service. me, Roy. I you appreciate bet. it. You bet. God bless. All right.
Well, thank you very much for uh, tuning in to episode two of the Thrivonomics podcast. We hope that you were that you really were touched and moved by the testimonies of both uh, Anthony and Eric, and uh, that this was something that that uh, that really spoke and uh, spoke to you and resonated with you. If you want to learn more information about Defenders of Freedom or ways that you can contribute, then we uh, absolutely encourage you to do so. Just visit defendersoffreedom.us. Make sure you do use .us instead of .com, but that'll take you straight to their main page. Um, we don't get any any financial benefit uh, out of Not working with them other than the fact that we just know that this is a very, very important organization that needs uh, needs support. And they're, they're one of the good ones. They're, they're one of the ones where virtually, uh, I think it's uh, somewhere around 96% of all, all donations go, uh, go straight to the veteran. So it's, it's one of those organizations where they are truly keyed up and, um, and truly driven by uh, seeing impactful changes in the lives of the veterans that have, that have, uh, that have fought so valiantly for, for our freedoms and, and uh, for the defense of, of our way of life. And so it's, it's, um, I feel it, it's just incumbent upon us to return the favor and make sure that they're getting everything that they need in order to return to a normal life. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, go to defendersoffreedom.us to learn more. Um, if you would like to contribute um, either ideas of organizations that uh, that Thrive Forward can be a part of or that, that might be a benefit of, of um of some of the some of these initiatives that, that we're launching throughout the course of the year and and in coming months and months and years, we would love to hear about it. Just reach out to us at Thrivenomics at thrivemortgage.com. Shoot us an email to that email address and and uh, and we'll be uh, we'll be sure to get back in touch with you. Um, and roll any closing thoughts from you? We'll put the links in the descriptions. Yeah, in um, the show notes. Please, please, seriously, go check it out. Um, you know, we're doing a lot here to kind of feature a lot of these things and mm-hmm. for you guys just to, to something to listen to like uh, in your daily routine and if you guys have any thoughts also or any idea suggestions for the podcast I mean mm-hmm. we're, we're still kind of developing it and tweaking it and yeah. we'd love to hear feedback so please Absolutely. give us your feedback love, love to hear feedback would love for you to if you've enjoyed the the two episodes that you've heard so far we would love for you to go out and give us a review on whatever platform you're listening Apple Podcast yes. uh, iHeartRadio Spotify um, uh, or some of the others. Stitcher. Stitcher. Yeah. That was the other the one I was trying bunch. to think of. Yeah. yeah. Basically, whatever. Basically, po- anywhere you can hear a podcast, we're going to be on. Okay. So yeah. anything that you guys listen to already, we, we should be on there. Yeah. Love for you to, to hit subscribe, give us a five star review, and share it with your friends. This is Thrivenomics. The title sponsor of this show is Thrive Mortgage. Licensed in multiple states across the U.S., Thrive Mortgage employs the best professionals equipped with leading technology and the most efficient process to deliver a legendary lending experience. For more information about how we can serve you or to find a local mortgage professional in your area, please visit us at thrivemortgage.com. Thrive Mortgage is an equal housing lender. NMLS number 268552.